Hello and welcome to the SCT Magazine YouTube channel. I'm Megan Andrew and today I'm going to be sharing a beautiful wedding card that I created using products from Gina K Designs. The main product I wanted to use today was the curved floral banner dies. Now this is a great die set. Not only do you get a solid but you get this beautiful intricate outline as well that you can layer up. Now you can layer these up in contrasting colors to create like an outline effect without anything in the center. But you may be asking, how can I color that? Well, there's a stencil for that. And this stencil is a coordinating stencil that colors in all of the flowers, the leaves, the little buds, the centers, and various bits on the die. So this is going to create such a beautiful wedding card and I can't wait to show you how I'm going to use it. On my work surface, I have my Picket Fin Studios paper inking palette, which uh, will allow my die cut to stick to my surface while I ink it up. I am placing the stencil right on top of the design and you can see really easily when that lines up. Okay, I am starting off with Gina K Designs Innocent Pink and I am just going to use my mini Gina K blending brush and blend these flowers. And I'm going to go a little bit darker in the center and lighter out toward the edges. I do want this to be a softer card because it is for a wedding. So soft and pretty is what we're going for today. I also love that this pink has a little bit of peach in it too. I just washed my paper inking palette. How pretty is that? And so I want, it's nice and sticky and I wanna make sure that I don't tear anything when I move things off of it. Okay, for this one, I'm gonna go in with Dusty Rose. I'm just gonna cut those stickers on my ink cube here. I just want a tiny bit more of a darker pink for these berries. And I really like Dusty Rose for this. Now it's time to do our leaves, to blend those in. And so before I press it down, I am just trying to get it all nicely lined up. And that looks great. I don't really worry about cleaning off my stencil, but I just don't want to get the green and the red. So I'm going to wipe off that edge and I'm going to grab jelly bean green for this one. Again, cutting off the stickers on your cubes. The easiest way to get those open is to cut them with a blade instead of trying to pull off those stickers. Okay. And I'm trying to be a little bit darker towards the bottom of each leaf and go lighter as I go out. Again, I want this to be nice and soft, soft and pretty. I just love that stencils allow you to create such beautiful images so easily. Not all of us are great at coloring with alcohol markers, it's something that I'm still practicing. And so I really appreciate when I can get a stencil that will allow me to color in my images so easily. Okay, just making sure I get to the ends of all of my leaves there. I'm gonna do one more tiny touch right there on that guy and then we can Peel and reveal. Wow, look at how pretty that is. Love it. Okay, to our next stencil, we are going to go ahead and do the centers of the flowers and these little buds over here. For this one, I'm going with sweet corn, which is a really nice yellow. Mm 
really only had to touch that the tiniest bit. And remember, these can move on you because they have such small stems, they can, they're movable. So if you have to move one to make sure your stencil lines up, like I just did right there, then go ahead and do that just so that your image will line up. I'm going back to Dusty Rose for this one. Just making those a little bit darker. So pretty. Okay, the last step in the stencil is to add some shading in here where in between the leaves and the flowers. And there's also the flower centers as well. So for this section in these darker areas, I'm going to go in with in the navy. And that's because I wanna use in the navy on my card. And this I'm going to use a light touch as well because this is a nice dark color. It's going to add just that little bit of shading. Okay, now to those flower centers. I'm going to wipe off a little bit of my in the navy so that I don't get any navy on the center of my flowers. And I'm going to use again Dusty Rose to get that darker pink in the center of those flowers. Okay, so let's peel and reveal. Oh, wow, that is so pretty. Let me just hold this up for you. I really love the addition of that in the navy on the background. How beautiful is that? Before I clean off my stencils, I have another die cut here. So I might as well just go ahead and ink blend this die cut. I can use it on this card, or if I don't, I'll have one already on hand. So it's just easier to do that when you already have your inks out. You could stop here and just use this die cut, but I love the added dimension that the outline brings when you place it on top. So I'm going to go ahead and use my fine tip glue bottle from Gina K Designs and add some glue to the back of this die cut. Now this is a little finicky, but it is worth it to get this beautiful, delicate look of this die cut over your ink blending. Picking up the die cut and getting it in place with your fingers is always a great way. And with liquid adhesive, you have that little bit of wiggle time to get everything perfectly in place. It definitely gives it a softer feel with that die cut added to the top. So I'm gonna do the same on the second one too. And now I have two beautiful ink blended die cuts. So let's put our card together with these. I grabbed an A2 size piece of In the Navy cardstock from Gina K Designs. I love this beautiful navy. And this is why I decided to do navy on the negative spaces. I really love the mix of pink and navy for a wedding especially. And I am going to use the Master Layouts 9 die. This is the oval from Master Layouts 9 and I am going to cut this out of in the navy so that I can put this in the center of my flowers. Okay, so I cut my oval out of the in the navy A2 cardstock. I want to also have some texture on the background. So I've grabbed the gingham embossing folder and just used that on a piece of white cardstock. I've cut this down to four by five and a quarter so that I can place it on that negative piece of in the navy and have that nice frame around here. Then I can place my oval 
in the center to give my card a really nice focal piece and a place to put my sentiment. And then I can use my flowers around the curve of that oval. Before I adhere my oval down, I want to add my sentiment to it, but I wanna get everything lined up perfectly so that I know my flowers aren't going to cover it. To do this, I'm going to grab my Misty and place it here on the edge. I'm going to place my floral die cut here. Let me just move this up a tiny bit and place my die cut here. I wanna to try to make sure that that oval is in the center and you can kind of gauge that from the gingham pattern in the background. I might leave a little bit more space down here for these flowers. And then I am grabbing the beautiful ornate spring stamp set. I love this stamp set because of the gorgeous sentiments. Congrats to you with love, birthday wishes, hello lovely, and thinking of you. But there's also some really beautiful stamped images on there too. But this congratulations to you is perfect for a wedding card. And I love how it fits just nicely above that flower. Now I am going to get my oval placed here. I am going to make sure my sentiment is straight and move my flower. And I'm going to ink up with Versamark. This is a watermark ink that is very sticky so that the embossing powder will stick to it. And then I'm gonna use Ranger's white super fine detail embossing powder. Just to that. And I can use a brush to get any of that embossing powder off. Once your embossing powder is no longer warm, you can just take a chamois or a cloth and wipe off your cardstock to get all of that priming powder off. Okay, I'm going to adhere my floral to the oval first because I wanna pop both of them up at the same time. So I'm gonna put some tape adhesive from Gina K Designs right on these leaves that are gonna to be touching that oval. Okay, next I'm gonna grab some foam adhesive from Scrapbook Adhesives by 3L to really get this down on my card front. And we can hold it over the front of the card. Just trying to make sure that we get that oval in the center. Here I have the Gina K Designs Angel Aura Rhinestones. These are extremely beautiful. Perfect for a wedding card. Look at how those shine. So these are faceted on the top so that you can put the flat side onto your card. They would also be great for a shaker card too. And I'd like to put quite a few on. I think I'm gonna do nine. Nice, uneven number. I like to place my glue dots first just so I get an idea of where everything is going to go. And then I can place the rhinestones. So, so pretty. Look how that sparkles. I love it. I love this beautiful, versatile die set with stencil. It is wonderful for all different card occasions, but especially beautiful for a wedding card. Thanks so much for watching as I created this wedding card using products from Gina K Designs today. If you're interested in the products that I use, be sure to go to the link in the video description 
to check out today's blog post where I've linked up all of those products for you. If you have a busy wedding season ahead, be sure to get some wedding cards in your stash. Thanks so much for watching and happy creating.